Welcome everyone to another community episode number 14 already, Tips and Tricks. Today we hear from Max Schmidt, Cloud Consultant at Liquid Reply on how to do progressive delivery with Argo rollouts, right? Based on Dynatrix observability data, and I think we will even see some additional best practices on ownership information. Max, welcome. Thank you so much for doing this. Hope everything is good with you. Thanks a lot for having me. Yes, everything, everything is fine. Um, and I would say let's get right into the topic. Mm -hmm. of, of our Argo rollouts implementation. Perfect. And with that, I would uh, kick off with uh, what you're going to learn today. Um, so we will show you how you can implement Argo rollouts to work together with Dynatrace. There are some special things you need to have in mind for this. Um, and uh, I would then show you the analysis template. This is what is actually querying the metrics from Dynatrace. So I would say almost the most important part. Um, and we will also get into the topic of releases monitoring. So to use to still use the Dynatrace release uh, feature when using Argo rollouts. And for this, um, I would start right with like a very short demo um, to kick off a rollout because it takes a few minutes. Mm -hmm. And during uh, the time of the rollout, we will go on with the slides and then the rollout can happen in the background. So for this, we have here our rollout definition. You can also find this in a Git repository, which is uh, linked. Um, and to now kick off a new rollout, I would just change any value here. So for example, the priority to medium, of course, in a production environment version would change, but for this demo, we will not do it like this. Um, that's all you need to change. And if we then go ahead and apply what we just changed. Okay, that took a little longer than expected. Um, mm -hmm. But we can now see that in the background, once we apply it, um, an analysis run starts right here. So right mm -hmm. now an analysis is running against a Dynatrace metric. Mm -hmm. So to now go a little bit further. Um, yeah, how to differentiate actually from canary uh, or stable using environment variables, because that's a little bit uh, special in this case, because of course we don't want uh, to query based on metrics that are already used for stable deployment. We only want to get the values from a canary. Um, and that's why we will set an environment variable to our pod, which is called dt underscore release underscore stage, mm -hmm. which is set to a rollouts pod template hash. So <laughs> very long label. Um, this is automatically applied um, by the Argo rollouts controller. So this is not something that you will actually see in the manifests. This mm -hmm. This gets uh, added to the pods on deployment. Um, and this is what is actually um, like a unique hash. And then in Dynatrace, you can uh, query metrics based on this hash. So to only get values for your canary deployments or even for stable if you if you want that. Mm -hmm. um, a second variable that we will set is the DT release version. Um, this is used for the releases feature. Mm -hmm. um, and um, to basically use the Argo rollouts uh, feature, uh, what you need to do is to enable the cloud workload detection settings. Um, and they need to include the stage feature. I will show this uh, in another demo, but um, if I remember correctly, this should be a default value anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but without this, this will not work. Um, we also have here a link to version detection strategies uh, from the Dynatrace documentation, um, which explains a little bit more um, and optional values that can also be used um, besides the release version. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Max, we will actually, for everybody out there, we will add all the links that you discussed today in the description of the video. But thank you so much. It's it's really great how you explain it and uh, and that you, that you did all this. But yeah, as I said, all the links will be available in the description. Yeah, sure. Okay, so um, as I already said, the heart of the rollout is the analysis template, which is... Um, actually querying Dynatrace um, and makes the rollout decision. So if, if your threshold that you set is exceeded, so for example, 10% of errors, your uh, rollout controller will roll back your deployment. Um, 
And for this, uh, the first thing you need to do is you need to create um, a token in, in Dynatrace, an access token. Um, it's enough if the token only has read metrics. You don't need any write permissions or anything else. Um, then we will use the web provider, which is built into Argo rollouts, um, which is basically just querying an API, and then you get back the JSON. For this, we use the environment API v2, so not the v1. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and as already explained, so the query gets the service metrics um, based on the process group relationship, and this is based on the release stage hash value um, that we use. Um, yeah, and that's just in our case, 10% of errors, it will roll back for the analysis that we have here. Um, that's actually how um, an analysis template or our analysis template looks like. Um, the important part is the URL, which looks maybe a little bit um, complex, but it's uh, basically what you get back from uh, the Dynatrace uh, API, uh, where, which is your query to the Dynatrace API. Um, then under headers, we will uh, at the authorization token or like your read metrics token that we specified. Mm -hmm. um, so this is an encoded URL and this is actually what the query looks like. So maybe that's then a little bit more mm -hmm. easy to see. Um, and now we will get to the actual demo. So in the meantime, um, the rollout should be finished now. So if we go to our um, our deployment here, we can do a kubectl get pods. And we see that we have a new pod, um, four minutes, 31 seconds. The rollout is actually not completely finished, so it's still ongoing, but that's not a problem. Mm -hmm. And if we now have a look at our pod, we will see at the top um, this label for the rollout pod template hash for this value. So we'll just copy it so that we can find this easily in Dynatrace. So let me just go to the Kubernetes workloads. And here we should now find our Workload somewhere ah, on page two, actually. <laughs> um, if we now click on here under properties and tags, we can see at the bottom here the labels that we set. So the part template hash, so it's actually the correct one, also the version. Um, and then the Kubernetes service that got detected in this case, um, the, the canary service. And if we now go into services, you will actually see um, like a split between canary and stable based on, yeah. So you can see that um, based on the stage, mm -hmm. we now have two services. So one for the stable, which don't know which one of this this is, but this is actually the canary, but we will have also another one here that is for stable. So basically you can now query just this service with the Dynatrace uh, API or the data explorer to get the values back. Um, and we will also have the releases under cloud automation. Mm -hmm. So at the bottom here, so I will just click on, on the releases. And here we can also see the stage, the version. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, you would also find any issues here if, if issues would have been found for this rollout. Um, and if we now click on the process uh, instance that is running. can also see that uh, we have text set automatically based on the environment variables. And down here, you can also find the Kubernetes workload this uh, process group is a process group instance is uh, belonging to, um, also the stage and version. Mm -hmm. Would you mind opening up that workload again for me? 
that is linked here. Yeah. I think the oh, one that yeah. you have, have linked here, I think that's also mm -hmm. good. Because to, to recap, I think what, what you've what you've just done is really showed best practices on how we can enrich the data that Dynatrace has about the processes, the workloads, and the services with release metadata, as we call it. The version information, the stage, you use the stage really to separate between stable and canary by using that hash. Um, and therefore, you can then query the data in the analysis template. That's great. Another thing that I would highlight here is the owners feature, because this is another best practice that I want to highlight. Uh, we have the capability on the deployment itself, so on any type of uh, monitored entity in Dynatrace to specify which team is responsible for that particular component, for that particular entity. In your case, you specified the team Liquid uh, from Liquid Reply to be the owner of this workload. And then this is just a, another best practice. And if you expand this here, actually, right in Dynatrace, you can keep uh, ownership information. So you have a team identifier. And then in Dynatrace, you can configure additional ways, like how can you contact this team? Could be a Slack channel. It could be MS Teams, whatever it is. And then you can also combine this with automation workflows. So in case a problem happens, you can then extract the contact details and send, let's say, Max Schmidt uh, an email in case there's an issue with with that rollout. <laughs> but that that that's really cool. Um, and and especially so, I know a lot of people are using Argo rollouts, and there's always been questions. So how can you really differentiate? And and you showed, I think, a really neat uh, way of doing this by leveraging our release version detection to use the stage property or the stage metadata to separate between. Uh, stable and canary. I think that's that's really cool. Um, yeah. Uh, anything else, Max? That you that you had that I missed to kind of recap? Um, I think for, maybe I should show um, the actual cloud workload detection. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for the good, stage yeah. feature, I think I missed that one. Um, but as I said, so as far as I know, that's anyway the default. But I just want to point this out because without this. This will actually not work. So under uh, processes and containers and set the settings of your environment, at the very bottom, there is cloud application and workload detection. If we click on here. Finally, <laughs> mm -hmm. also at the very bottom. Um, so that's actually the default rule. Um, I have not changed this, um, but this switch needs to be toggled on for stage mm -hmm. because the yeah the stage feature which we uh, leverage using the DT release stage um, environment variable. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because yeah. basically what it means is we are uniquely detecting your cloud applications by looking at metadata like namespace container name, stage, and product in this case. And if any of these values changes, then we uniquely identify a workload. And so um, it's, a, it's a good default choice, actually. And maybe also just tiny information. If you just want to test it out without having your whole environment split mm -hmm. up, you can also just do it on a on a namespace mm -hmm. level, basically, like a test namespace where this rule is just applied to, mm -hmm. in case that should be toggled off for some reason in your environment. Mm -hmm. Cool. And the um, the evaluation, the analysis template from from Argo, I know we will link also to Argo rollouts to the documentation in case people are looking into Argo rollout. But the, today's talk was really about how you can de integrate this with Dynatrace. All of the resources, I think the, the CRDs, the manifest that you had, we will also link them. We put them on the Git repository and the link to that Git repository is also in the description of the video. Max, can you do me one more favor if you go back to your console, to your terminal window? I think you said That's the uh, evaluation is, is the evaluation now successfully finished? Do we see uh, everything? Should be. I just need should to be. find the correct one. 12, yeah, last uh, one, 12 minutes. 12 minutes should yeah. be that one. So Perfect. if I go into here, mm -hmm. we should also be able to see what the Dynatrace API gave back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can see here your percentage. So our rollout has 0.08% of errors. Uh -huh. I would say that's a value where you don't need to roll back your changes. Uh -huh. uh, so everything is fine. But if any of these values uh, would be 10, uh -huh. 
in, in this case, uh, it would roll back. Perfect. And then again, for folks that are not familiar with Argo rollouts in the analysis template, you can really specify different queries. There's different ways how you can pull data from external tools. The one that you chose today is actually, I think, the easy way with the uh, the web integration that they have where you can make a call to a REST API and pull in that data and then parse the result and then compare it against the threshold, which is really, which is really neat. Awesome. Yeah, you can also use multiple multiple queries and chain queries, however you want to like mm -hmm. it. But in our case, just one one query. One query. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Yeah. Maybe lot, one last thing to mention is we are also as part of the Captain Open Source Project. We have a so-called Captain Metrics Server component that uh, if you're running on Kubernetes, which obviously you would, if you're running Argo rollouts, you can also use the Metrics Server uh, to pull in data back from, let's say, Dynatrace into Kubernetes and make it available as Prometheus or Kubernetes native metrics. So that would be another option, but I really like your, your web approach because that's the easy way, just execute the query as it is. But for folks, if you are interested in the Captain Metrics server is also a component that can bring metrics back into Kubernetes from any type of external data source like Dynatrace. You can execute your uh, Dynatrace metrics queries, even DQL, our uh, Dynatrace query language that can extract data from Dynatrace Grail. We can bring it back and then just use it here as, as Prometheus uh, metrics. That's also nice. Cool. Max, anything else? Um, I don't think so. Maybe I can show the analysis template in mm -hmm. the in here, but yeah, it's nothing special. So what's maybe interesting to note, which we don't have in the slides right now, um, we set an initial delay um to three minutes usually it's way more faster than three minutes until you get the first uh, metrics but the problem is um when like dynatrace does not give um like values back the analysis template will actually fail mm -hmm. um and with three minutes we are totally safe and there should never be like the possibility that your analysis fails just because data is not already um scraped by by dynatrace mm -hmm. that's a good that's a good default you right away a good uh, recommendation so that, uh, you know, typically it takes a couple of seconds until the data that we capture is processed and available again through the API. And so I guess uh, playing a little bit around with the right delay is, is a good best practice, yeah? Cool. Yeah, totally. All right. Then I would say, Max, thank you so much for doing this tips and tricks session. And I, um, I encourage you to, uh, hopefully come back with more tips and tricks in the future because I know you're working with Dynatrace uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So it would be nice to have you back. Yeah, hopefully. Thanks for having me. And maybe we have another session. It would yeah. be fun. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.